Okay, so in this video, we will look at two examples of the divergence theorem, dt. And if you recall, the result is very straightforward, very simple. If the sequence an does not converge to zero, then the corresponding series, a1 plus a2 plus a3 plus a4 and so forth, automatically diverges. So let's look at two examples of this. If we look at the series from 1 to infinity, say negative 1 to the n. So this series will be negative 1 plus 1, negative 1 plus 1, negative 1 plus 1 forever. So will this series converge or diverge? Well, the sequence that we're trying to sum is negative 1 to the n, so it's a n. And if we look at the limit, as n goes to infinity of a n, this is the limit as n goes to infinity of negative 1 to the n. And negative 1 to the n will oscillate forever as n goes to infinity between negative and positive 1. So it does not get closer and closer to a unique real value. So this limit does not exist, therefore clearly it's not equal to 0. Which implies by the divergence theorem that the corresponding series diverges. And you can see this very intuitively, right? If you look at the partial sum of this series, so if you sum the first term, you get negative 1. If you sum the first two terms, you get negative 1 plus 1, which is equal to 0. If you sum the first three terms, you get negative 1 plus 1 negative 1, which equals negative 1. If you sum the first four terms, you get negative 1 plus 1 negative 1 plus 1, which equals 0, and so forth. And so you see the sequence of partial sums gives you negative 1 first, then 0, then negative 1, then 0. So this sum will oscillate forever between negative 1 and 0, and clearly the total does not converge to a fixed real value. But this was even simpler as a direct consequence of the divergence theorem. Let's look at one other example. if we're trying to sum 2n over 5n plus 1. We can write out the first few terms of this series. So when n is 1, we have 2 over 5 plus 1, 7. Plus when n is 2, 4 over 10 plus 1, 11. Let's write out one more term. When n is 3, 6 over 15, plus 1, 16, and so forth. So here's our series with its first three terms. And we're asking, does the series converge or diverge? Well, let's see. We're trying to sum the terms of this sequence. And so we look at the limit as n goes to infinity of a n. a n is 2n over 5n plus 1. Well, we have an infinity over infinity case, but this is easily handled if we multiply top and bottom by 1 over n. So we'll have 2 over 5 plus 1 over n. 1 over n shrinks to 0 as n goes to infinity, and we're left with 2 over 5 which we don't care that it's 2 over 5 so much as that it is not equal to 0. So the terms we are summing do not converge to 0. Therefore, by the divergence theorem, the series diverges. And always, I should have mentioned this earlier, when you claim that a series diverges, always quote by which theorem. So here, they both diverge by the divergence test, or again, divergence theorem. 
Now I want to leave you with a word of caution. And that if a sequence does converge to zero, then the corresponding series may converge or diverge. So the fact that you are summing terms that are approaching zero in the limit does not allow you to conclude anything. The series may converge in some cases and it may diverge in some other cases. And let's look at an example of this. Well, actually two examples and we've seen those two examples in the past. Right? So the first example we'll look at is summing from 1 to infinity 1 over n. Well this is 1 plus 1 half plus 1 or third plus 1 quarter plus dot dot dot. Well here the sequence is a n and clearly the limit as n goes to infinity of a n is equal to 0. As n approaches infinity 1 over n approaches 0. So we have the limit of a sequence being equal to 0 and now we consider the corresponding series. We're summing the terms of our sequence and this infinite sum, the so-called harmonic series, we have seen in a previous video. And we know that this series diverges by blowing up to positive infinity. So here's one example of a series where the individual terms do shrink to zero and yet the series diverges by blowing up. So the terms we're summing are shrinking to zero but they are not getting small enough fast enough, so they're still just a little too big. So the series diverges. What about an example where we have convergence? Well, we have also seen such an example in the past. If I sum now 1 over n squared, as n goes from 1 to infinity, this is 1 plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 9 plus 1 over 16 plus dot dot dot. So here, the corresponding sequence is 1 over n squared. And if you look at the limit, as n goes to infinity of a n, clearly the result is again 0. As n goes to infinity, so does n squared, so 1 over n squared will approach 0. So we are summing an infinite list of real numbers and the individual real numbers are approaching zero in the limit. And we have again in the past shown that this series does converge and far less obvious is that it does converge to exactly pi squared over 6. We don't really care so much as the exact value so much as that, that this series does converge. So hopefully here <coughs> I've made my point. We have in each case an infinite series. In each case the individual terms are shrinking to zero. In the one case though the series blows up therefore diverges. In the other case the series returns a finite number therefore converges. And so you see if the terms you are summing converge to zero, you cannot conclude anything. You may have, in some cases, divergence, in other cases, convergence. The point is, is the terms shrinking to zero is not enough to guarantee a convergent series. The terms have to shrink to zero, and they have to shrink to zero quick enough.